Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. This week we're talking about a character in the Bible named Gideon. And the story of Gideon starts out with God not being very happy with his people, the Israelites. If you remember, the Israelites were the ones, the ones God saved from Pharaoh, the people Moses led across the Red Sea on dry ground. Hundreds of years had passed since then, but throughout all of God's miracles they had experienced, they still did evil in the eyes of the Lord. There were consequences for these actions. God didn't bless them, but instead he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. And the Midianites were not their friends. They ruined all their crops and animals. The Israelites had to hide from them in caves. After Israel had nothing left, they finally cried out to God for help. And God heard their cry, and he had a plan. The cool thing about all of this is that God wasn't happy with the Israelites, but he still listened to them and answered their prayer. This is where Gideon comes into the story. He was threshing wheat in a hidden place so the Midianites wouldn't see him and steal the wheat. When an angel of the Lord came and sat next to him, the angel spoke to him and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why is all this bad stuff happening? Where are all the miracles our fathers told us about? The Lord replied to Gideon, Go with all your strength and save Israel from the Midianites. I'm sending you to do it. Then Gideon started all the excuses. But Lord, how can I save Israel? My people are the weakest, and I am the smallest and the youngest in my family. But he said, I will be with you, and you will defeat all the Midianites together. Then Gideon asked God for a sign. He wanted to be sure this was really God that he was talking to. First, he prepared an altar as an offering for God. This was the way they gave gifts and asked for forgiveness to God before Jesus died on the cross. He set his offering down on a rock and fire came from the rock, completely consuming the offering. An angel of the Lord disappeared. Then Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord. That same night, the Lord told Gideon to take down the altar his father had built for a pretend God. The Israelites had started believing in idols, and that's why God had been angry with them. He is the only real and true God, and these people were praying and giving offering to pieces of wood and statues that can't do or hear anything. So Gideon took ten of his servants at night and tore down the altars. The people were mad when they realized Gideon had wrecked their altars, but they decided that if their idol was really a god, he could punish Gideon. Of course, nothing ever happened to Gideon, because their idol isn't real. Gideon still wanted to make sure that God would save the Israelites, so he asked for another sign. He placed a piece of wool from a sheep on the ground. If there was dew only on the fleece and all the ground around it is dry, then he would know that God would save them. When Gideon checked the wool in the morning, it was soaking wet and the ground was dry. The ground was dry. Still, Gideon asked for one more sign. This time, he asked that the fleece would be dry and the ground would be wet. And sure enough, the next morning, it was just as Gideon asked. So Gideon gathered up an army and started out for the Midianite camp. Gideon was probably feeling pretty good about things. He had a ton of men to help him fight and God promised he would help them win. God had something a little different in mind. He told Gideon he had too many men in his army. He knew that Israel would, would think they defeated the Midianites on their own without God's help. So God said to Gideon, Announce to the people, anyone who's afraid may go home now. Amazingly, 22,000 of the men left. That is a lot of people. More than half of the whole army went home. Only 10,000 stayed. Gideon still felt all right. At least they had 10,000 men, right? Not for long. The Lord told Gideon he still had too many men. When they went down to the water for a drink, the Lord told him, separate the men that drink the water like a dog and the ones that get on their knees and drink from their cupped hands. I'm thinking this took quite a while with all those men, but Gideon did it. Surprisingly, only 300 men got on their knees and drank from their hands. All the rest drank like dogs. God told Gideon that he only wanted 300 men and the rest were supposed to go home. This way, when they won, the Israelites would know that God was in control and only 300 men left. Gideon didn't know how God was going to help them win. There were so many Midianites against just 300 of them, so he worried and wasn't getting any sleep. So God decided to help Gideon and make him feel better about things. 
During the night, the Lord spoke to Gideon, If you are still afraid that I am going to help you win, go down to the valley with your servant, where the Midianites are staying, and listen to what they're saying. You'll feel much better after that. Guess what Gideon did? He was still afraid, but he took his servant and snuck down to the Midianite camp. Just as he arrived, he heard one of them talking to his friend about a dream he had. He was saying, I dreamt that a round loaf of bread came rolling into our camp. It came so fast that it ran right into one of our tents and made it fall over. His friend responded, This must mean the sword of Gideon, with the help of God, will defeat the Midianites. As soon as Gideon heard this, he worshipped God and ran back to camp. So we're going to be reading in Judges chapter 7, 15 through 22. As soon as Gideon heard of the telling of the dream and its interpretation, he worshipped and he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has given the host of Midian into your hand. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies and put the trumpets into the hands of all of them, empty jars with torches inside their jars. And he said to them, Look at me and do likewise. When I come to the outskirts of the camp, do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then blow the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and shout, For the Lord and for Gideon! So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came to the outskirts of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, when they had just set the watch. And they blew the trumpets and smashed the jars that were in their hands. Then the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the jars. They held in their left hands the torches and in their right hands the trumpets to blow, and they cried out, A sword for the Lord and a sword for Gideon. Every man stood in his place around the camp, and all the army ran. They cried out and fled. When they blew the three hundred trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his comrade and against all the army. And the army fled so far, as far as Bethshda toward Zerah, as far as the border of Abel Mahola, by Tabith. And those are some funny names, and to be honest, I don't even know if I said them right. But Gideon returned and called out, Get up, the Lord has given us the Midianite camp. He divided all the men in three groups and gave them all trumpets and empty jars with torches inside. Gideon and the men surrounded the camp in three groups. When Gideon started to blow his trumpet, the rest followed. They blew their trumpets and yelled, For the Lord and for Gideon! Then they broke the jars they were carrying, holding on to the torches with one hand, and the trumpet in the other, shouting, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. When the Midianites heard this, they started yelling and running around. Then when all the trumpets started again, the Lord caused the Midianites to start freaking out, and they started to turn on each other with their sword. And that was the day that God saved Gideon and defeated the Midianites. Without God, none of this was possible. With God, nothing is impossible. Next time you're in a tough situation, you can know that God will give you strength and he wants to help you. You can always ask God and he will answer you.